Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me today. I love Miss Delphi the Music, also I'm excited to have you on. Yes, me too. And so for the first That's part, okay. can you please explain a little bit about yourself for those who don't know who you are? Yeah, um, so so I'm Nicholas Johnson. Um, I am a, a music director, um, and I'm currently the music director, conductor, um, and also keyboardist for, for the Mrs. Doubtfire Broadway tour. Um, <clears throat> I was previously the associate music director for the tour, so I, I started since the beginning, um, and uh, that's been going on since a year, year and three months now, uh, which is crazy. And we have about a month left, so it's been it's been a really wonderful, blessed run. Um, it was it's been such a great opportunity. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm originally from Central California, um, born and raised. I went to Fresno State and studied music education there, um, and uh, and then I moved to Brooklyn and I started to do um, uh, shows, Broadway tours. I, I did the um, the Donna Summer musical. Um, in 2021. And then this is my kind of next job opportunity, if you will. Yeah. That's awesome. And so what got you into theater and what kind of got you into the music directing area? Yeah. So I think um, the collaboration is, is, is what I fell in love with and, and what still makes me feel so fortunate to show up to work every day. Um, the musical theater community is such a, a, um, sweet place to to be it's it's a great environment it's um you know of course there's drama of course we're we're theater goers like we're <laughs> we're dramatic you know um but but it's always such and especially for the company mrs doubtfire it's such a a positive and um genuine environment to be a part of and i think that's that's what uh, i love about it um and why i got in in the first place i i i'm i'm a mainly self-taught musician um at least I was growing up. I started playing piano when I was seven. Um, and I was just learning, you know, pop rock jazz songs that my parents were listening to on the radio. Um, and then in high school, I uh, um, got to play in my first first musical. It was a production of West Side Story. And, and I didn't know at the time that, oh, um, you know, plays could be underscored with music more or less you can make a living off of doing it. Um, and uh, so I kind of went down this, this rabbit hole of, of musical theater stuff, you know, the, the West Side Stories, the Hamiltons, the, the Les Mis, you know, all, all these big productions. And, um, and, uh, and then I also didn't realize that there were a lot of uh, other big Broadway theaters in my area because growing up in Central California, um, the town I'm from had, you know, 10,000 people, but it's right around, it's about two hour drive from Sacramento, from San Francisco, from LA. Um, well, it's like a four hour drive now. It's a little bit farther, but there's all these, you know, big Broadway houses around. And um, I started going and seeing Broadway shows and seeing the tours that came through. And I saw like Wicked, uh, Beetlejuice, Hamilton and San Francisco. Um, and I just really like fell in love with the, the collaboration of it, you know, there's so many um, moving pieces, obviously you being an actor yourself, it's like, there's so many moving pieces from cast, crew, musicians, um, creatives, you know, and, and each one is so essential to, to the production. And I think that's what really got me um, into it and, and, and really got me like the fire under my butt, you know, for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And so, with Miss Doubtfire, the musical call coming to an end uh, in, a, in a month or so, what has been your favorite stop on tour and why? Ooh, um, I would say Los Angeles. Um, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm a California boy at heart. Um, um, I absolutely love New York and, and it's treated me really well. Um, but I, uh, being from California and then also seeing um, my first Broadway show, in LA at the Pantages Theater, um, and to get to do, to, to to especially when I conducted the show, I, when I was the associate, I conducted once a week was was pretty unless something they needed me to do more. So to conduct a Broadway show at the first Broadway house that I saw a Broadway show at was was such a blessing and an honor, and and it was a very like full circle moment that that you know uh, just a reminder to be grateful, you know, and anything can happen and. Um, and to really what you're whatever you're doing, you know, to give as much love and and genuine heart into that, you know, 
Um, and then of course, you know, I love the, the ocean. I love the beach and, um, and Los Angeles, Southern California, like the weather's always perfect. And, you know, it's, it's just such a great, great place to be for me. And that was probably my favorite stop on tour. That's good. And so being on tour, what is the hardest part about being on tour? Obviously it might be a little different as a music director than being an actor, but what's the hardest part for you? Yeah, I, I would say the hardest part is, is the, um, being away from your loved ones, honestly. Um, everything else is very great. You know, it's, it's very, um, uh, I mean, you, you're literally, you know, you, you get to do what you want to do day in, day out. And, and, and that's very, very rewarding, but it's also, you know, I went eight or nine months without seeing, you know, being in, in, in the city, being away from family. I hadn't seen my parents for over a year since I started the tour until, um, not this time, but the last time that I visited, this was, uh, when we did, um, a run in San Francisco, uh, in July. So, so, you know, that's always something to, to consider and to, to really, uh, appreciate, you know, anytime that you are on tour, uh, and you get that opportunity to, to like hang out with friends and family, you know, cherish every second that you get to, because, because, you know, that's how show business is. And, and, and it does kind of push you away from that. But, um, but, uh, I would say that, and then also, um, trying to not eat out all the time, <laughs> all the yeah. time, you know, um, uh, we're fortunate that, that our tour gives us a little bit of flexibility in, in like where we want to stay. Um, and, and we also don't have like, I, I, the Donna summer musical, that was a bus and truck tour. There was a lot of like, you're in a different city every night. Um, and that could get a little tiring, you know, you're sitting on a bus for six hours. It's very much like a rock star lifestyle. Um, but, uh, but this tour, the minimum we stay is at like a week at a time. So it allows me to, you know, get groceries and to, uh, make my own food and do very, very, you know, simple household activities that you kind of take for granted when you, when you're not on tour. Um, but yeah, I would say those two things are like, for me personally, really challenging sometimes. That completely makes sense. But the next part kind of adds on, and I think you kind of mentioned it, but what's the best part about being on tour as a music director? Yeah, I think it's, um, it, it's, it's entertaining the audience, honestly. Um, uh, th- there's a lot, there's a, there's so many wonderful blessings that come with this job, but I think, and it, and half the reason why, why you do it is, is, you know, for people's enjoyment. And, and, uh, it's, it's like when, when I take my bow, you know, you've seen the show, the cast bows, they point to the orchestra and conductor, you know, gets up and waves and, and, and you look back at this audience who, who is, who's completely, you know, they're, they're giving you a standing ovation, um, cheering for you, cheering for, for your, you know, your company and your family on stage. And, and there's something really, really rewarding in that. It's like, no matter how tired you are or how terrible your day was or whatever, you turn around and you made, you know, a couple thousand people's evening, you know, that that's really, really special and impactful. And, and, um, recently we, we, Rob McClure, um, departed our tour. We did a happy trails for him. And and of course he's just a gem on his own. He's incredible. Um, but the people there, he would get a lot of emails from people just saying like, um, you know, how touching the story was. And, and there's, there's a particular one where, where a, a girl came and saw the show. Um, and, and I believe she was in high school. This girl came and saw the show who was going through a very similar situation that, 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 um, the Hillard family was going through the show basically, um, you know, family conflicts and it was, uh, parents were getting a divorce and, but there's a speech at the end of the show that talks about, um, a, a made up character named Katie and this girl's name happened to be Katie. And she said, um, it's so t- I can like literally get emotional thinking about it, but she's like the Katie that you were talking about tonight was me. And I just want you to know how impactful this story was. So it's like to see that and to see people like really, you know, love, what you do and, and, and mind you, and it's like, we, you put so much time and work into it during rehearsals and tech 
and and uh, for it to pay off and really truly touch audience members, it's such a uh, a cool thing and it's such a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, that's probably my answer. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And so, uh, with Miss Doubtfire, is the particular song that is the hardest to conduct, and what song is your favorite to conduct? Ooh, okay, okay. Um, hardest to conduct. Um, I would say. Uh, playing with fire is probably the hardest song to conduct. Um, our show, like a lot of other pop rock shows with um, smaller orchestrations, I'm I'm saying like ten or less musicians. We have a band of ten, and it's basically a pop rock rhythm section with three horns and a cello. Um, so it's very it's. Um, there's there's no like doubling parts. Everybody has their own role, and on top of that, the conductor is playing a keyboard. So so um, all of the raw piano parts that you hear in the show, the conductor is playing all of, like the organs and stuff. So in that particular number, it's very dense in the hands, like playing, but it's also you're dictating and cueing the ensemble, but you're also cueing all of these. If you really really pay attention to it, there's so many like tempo changes. And one of the conductor's biggest jobs is giving time, right? And keeping and being an anchor and keeping that time and pacing um, accurate for the ensemble cast and crew. Um, and uh, so between that with the amount of playing that we're actually playing in our hands and everything, all the cues that we're taking from the audience to, plus we also play with electronic design, uh, like uh, like click tracks and pre-recorded stuff a little bit um, to, to help fill up the space if you will um you have to the conductor cues all of those things and i think that song in particular has has the most of that yeah plus playing plus cueing so that one's always kind of a headache i always have to be like okay here it's number 20 in our score and we're like here's number 20 and it's like okay go you know it's like one yeah. of those things um but uh but at the end of the day it's still super fun um I'm going to give you two songs that I love okay. to conduct. <laughs> it's like, just because I feel so fortunate. Like our show has such great music. Um, it's written by uh, Wayne Kirkpatrick, who is the same composer that did something rotten. Um, and you could definitely feel like some kind of Wayne Kirkpatrick isms in, in our okay. score too. Um, Make me a woman is insane. It is so much fun. Um, it's, it's disco music. It, it, you feel like you're in studio 54, you know, um, that's a fun song. It, it's so much fun. Right. And, and mind you, the, the, the cast is just working on stage, you know, choreographically it's, it's always a, um, a challenging mm -hmm. one when, when new people like come in to rehearse it in the studio. Um, and, uh, but it's so powerful. It's so loud. It's infectious. There's so much energy, um, and I feel like we also feel that down in the pit, you know? Um, and uh, so that one's really, really fun to play. It's a moment in the show where, where I just kind of get to go nuts and, and have fun with, but on the very opposite end of the spectrum, I think about um, the song, just pretend, which is like musically, fundamentally, it's a very simple song, but it's such a pure and beautiful, like chord progression and you listen to the lyrics of the song. I mean, it's literally like like the da the a father expressing his love for his kids, which I feel like um, is something that that and talking a little bit to Rob about this because he's a father too. Something that you don't fully understand until you're a parent, um, and uh, so it's it's really really touching. And every time I, I get chills every time I play that song. Um, because it's just this this beautiful moving melody, but it's also this beautiful moving text and lyrics that that is just so much you know so much more bigger than all of us you know. So that one's a very great moment as well. Yeah, that's awesome. I think going along with what you said of if you listen to the lyrics, I mean, a lot of the songs that are like slower and more meaningful. If you listen to the lyrics, they're really meaningful. Like, I mean, if you think about it, like what the hell? That's one of the songs that's also a really meaningful song if you listen to the lyrics. So I think Absolutely. like a lot of the songs are actually really meaningful if you listen to the lyrics. Mm -hmm, definitely. And sometimes, um, uh, and I feel like that's kind of how Wayne Kirkpatrick writes um, because he's a singer songwriter 
uh, from Nashville. Like that's kind of his back or he's from Louisiana, but, but he's, he's based in Nashville now. And, and a lot of singer songwriter stuff, it, it's, it's, you know, the music kind of gets out of the way of the story or the, the um, message that you're trying to, to perceive or tell. Um, and, and, uh, and, and that's like another example. Like, I, I think our show does that a lot where it's like, Oh, I want to just, I want you to hear the words yeah. and let the music support that, you know? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And so uh, what advice would you give to young performers who might want to try out music conducting or keyboarding? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think the biggest thing is, is uh, reaching out to people and asking questions, you know, um, you'd be really surprised and it's, it's kind of scary um, because, because sometimes talking to people is tricky, right? It, it's, it's, a, it's a terrifying thing. Um, but, but uh, you'd be really surprised to see how welcoming this industry is. Um, I, I say that with a grain of salt because there are some people that, that are unfortunately kind of, you know, you know, taint that a little bit, but, but, um, but it's really, really a welcoming industry. And, and, you don't know until you ask questions and you don't know, people don't know you unless you introduce yourself, yeah. you know? And, and that's, that's kind of how I got involved. You know, I, I was doing musical theater. Uh, uh, it started playing in pit orchestras. And then I started, you know, I started taking vocal lessons and learning how to like talk to singers and how to work with singers. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of it was just, I don't know how to do this, but I really want to do it. I want to ask, you know, um, the people who are touring and the people who are on Broadway. And and that's how I made my connections. You know, I approached it. I was myself. I approached it from a very genuine place. Like, hi, I'm Nick. Um, you know, I, I just graduated high school. I'm studying music in college, you know. And by the time I'm done with school and wanting to do it professionally, I, I, I want to know how to do it. What would you recommend I work on as a musician and person also to, to be a music director, to be a conductor, to be a, a pit musician, you know? And, and I think that that's the best thing that you can do. And, and it's a little different for actors, right? Because there's like, you know, self tapes and auditions and callbacks that you go into. Um, I'm so grateful. I don't have to do that as a musician. It's usually like, like um, you talk to them and then, and then they'll send you music and you audition that way. Um, but, uh, but also it's like, if you're a dancer and you want to, to become a better tap dancer, you know, you can go and talk to a renowned tap dancer and say, Hey, I really want to get better at tapping. This is my experience. What would you recommend? You know? And, and I think, I think that's the biggest thing is don't be afraid to ask questions, you know? And, and that's, and I'm super about, I, I know that I, I had such a great outlet as um, in my music education growing up. And that was kind of half the reason why I wanted to study music education was to give back to that next generation of artists, the people, the pros, the people who are experienced, you know, they want to do the exact same thing. And because we want to keep the art form going, you know, it would die if, if we weren't coaching the next generation of passionate people that wanted to do it. Um, and, uh, and so that's the biggest thing. Don't be shy. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm also somewhat, you know, I'm, 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 I, I say I'm an extroverted introvert, um, you know, uh, and if, if talking to people is a little bit difficult for you, just know you're not alone. Um, and, um, and most people really do lead with love and kindness. So that would be my biggest advice. And also musical theater has getting, to like a technical standpoint, musical theater has so much uh, genres, you know, learn something from each genre, you know, learn a piece of jazz music, learn some, you learn a golden age theater tune, learn classical music, learn how to improvise, you know, learn how to sight read. All of those skills are necessary in some sort of capacity to do musical theater being versatile. Yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. So that actually wraps up the question portion. So I have about three to five songs from Miss Doubtfire. I'm going to okay. do a little guess the song. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's do it. Let's see if the mic will pick it up. It For doesn't sure. always work. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Let's see. No, I can't. Precious meal. Here we go. There we go. Well, I heard I 
<laughs> I heard the first part and and it said nutritious meal and uh, and that's got to be easy peasy. That is good. <laughs> the reason why I know that is because the conductor takes the cue off of that. So they'll say, right, nutritious meal. And then I give a three, four to the band, to the drummer and the drummer starts the tune. <laughs> that's good. Let's see. I'm having trouble hearing it. Help is on the way, dear! Uh, okay, so I'll tell you the song and then I'll tell you a snippet of the lyrics. And okay. we'll see how well you listen to the actors when they're singing. Oh, okay. okay. So it'll kind of be like a guess the lyric. Okay. Okay. Uh, sounds good. All at once, the adults have spoken. Now I'm a now I'm a kid in a home that's broken because they can't fix all of that they did wrong. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? Because yes, absolutely. What's the next lyric? Um. Um. Wow, I, this is actually stumping me a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's keeping me really honest. Uh. So this is this is my life. Isn't this just great? Yes. Isn't this just swell? What the hell? That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I will also say, um, and and this is this is where it's going to be interesting. And as because you saw the show, and if you've listened to the cast album, it's a, it's very different. Actually, um, there's a lot of song songs that were changed from Broadway to to our orchestration, which is also the same in London. So when you're like. Oh, guess the lyrics from the cast song. It's like, oh no, it's going to be a little bit more challenging because yeah. there's some songs that I've never actually and played. Like, some of the scenes are also a little bit different too, if I'm not mistaken, because I know the opening scene from what I saw in Chicago, it wasn't the big opening number. It was Rob in a sound, like a sound box recording like the opening. Exactly. And that pays more homage to the movie because yeah. that's how the movie with Robin Williams started, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Because when I when I was sitting in the show and the curtains open, I'm like, what, 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 what? because I've seen a, like a recording of the Broadway show, so I was expecting this giant like set, and then I see that, I'm like, first of all, that's, oh, yeah. that's different, and second of all, that's the size of the Nederlander stage. Like Hamilton was here, and and that's like super small. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, and, and it's funny because our set is is actually pretty pretty small in comparison to other other. You know, I know I have lots of friends that are on, you know, other tours and they go, they go, oh, what? be careful for this venue because this was kind of challenging to load into or whatever. Um, Chicago, Nederlander being one of those, because I, I know that's like one of the, that's the bigger one in Chicago. I think right? that is the biggest in Chicago. Gotcha. It's my very, favorite very one to go cool. to. I love the Nederlander. It's beautiful. I had such a fun. I'm so excited to go back. It's <clears> going to be a great time. When is, when well, are you coming back to the Nederlander? I will be there. I'll be there at the end of next week. Um, and I don't think, I don't actually don't think it's the Nederlander. I think it's the um, Cadillac. Yeah. Is where some like it hot is playing. And that's, that's the production that I'm going to go and see. I think that's the Cadillac. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And then, and then Harry Potter is there right that's now. That's Nederlander. Well. Oh my gosh. I love Harry Potter. Oh, me so too. Good. I've read all the books. Yep. So it's, good. It's a blast. Oh. Okay. So, uh, this one is make me a woman. So, okay. Uh, I need help and I'm coming to you. Hoping you can walk your magic on me. <laughs> With imagination calculation, you could be this. You're yes. Oh yeah. That's so good. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Sometimes what's gone is gone, and love is no longer strong enough. It's let go. Um, <laughs> and it's harder to move on than to just let go. Close. So you just let go. Uh, it's harder to hold on. Oh, dang it. Okay. That's I think you were on a different verse. Oh, perhaps, perhaps. Maybe yeah. that's a, a couple of verses later. I'm just saying I'm playing a pretty dense piano ballad in that <laughs> moment of the show. I'm just saying. No, that's so fun. <laughs> okay, I don't... Let's see. Okay, yes. Uh, uh, yes, it, it's a loop machine. It makes loops and bows. And loops and bows. 
what? It's a loop machine. Daniel as Mousy says it. It's a loop. A what? Oh my goodness. Uh, do you want me to give it to you? I, I hope this is, I mean, yeah, I hope this is one of the, the, um, the things that is, or one of the original Broadway. Sh- uh, it says, Daniel says, show. no, 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 not bows. It makes beats here. Check it out. Ready? And then he plays a beat. Oh, okay. So, so this is a funny story. So for the tour, Rob wrote, and it's the loop machine that you saw Rob, um, basically kind of i think it started with improv improvisation but like he wrote a different loop machine that we use or a loop machine scene that we use in our show that's different from the the cast album so that's the thing i was like i was like oh if it's a part of the original cast and it's not in our show i might not know it you're like uh (laughs) well i'm not doing so great so as hot as as the music director the interview today i'd like to thank you for joining me Oh my gosh, no, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it so much. Chris is a 